Next up is uh, Thomas Klauer with his, um, yeah, his, his presentation on testing with NML. Thank you. So if you've got a repository with notebooks, you may know that they're, it's not very easy to test them conventionally. Um, this isn't just about the technology. This is also because um, the code that you write in notebooks is different to the kind of code that you write in a library. So you're not so much writing functions and classes that can be sort of isolated and reused in different places. And that, you know, that's kind of how our conventional testing frameworks work. Uh, notebooks are much more about telling a story with code and, you know, having a, a narrative from getting your data in to producing your results in your plots that somebody can follow through. So NVVal is a tool for, for testing notebooks, and it's using one of the, the features of the notebook format, which is that um, the output is saved inside the notebook along with the code. So the basis of NVVal is that you're running the code and you're checking, is, does this output look right? Um, and this is, this is a project that's been developed by a number of people under the, the Open Dream Kit project, which is an EU-funded project. Vidar, who spoke this morning about the 3D stuff in, in IPython and Jupyter Notebooks, um, has, has done quite a lot of the work on it, um, along with a collection of, of people at Southampton who, who I'm kind of here to represent. Um, but David, Oliver, and our boss Hans have all done more of the work than I have on this. So you can install it, as with so many things, by doing pip install nbval. It's probably also on Conda Forge or anaconda.org somewhere. I can't remember what channel you have to look under for that. So I have some, I have some cells with some code here, and you can see that they're producing some output. And I'm, in order to, to run it, you run a command that looks like this, pi.test dash dash nbval lax. And this will, um, so the nbval is a, a plugin for the, the pytest framework, which is one of the, the very popular frameworks for testing Python code. And if I switch into a terminal and run pi.test nbval lax, then you'll see it runs these, these code cells. So each dot, which would normally represent one test, here represents one notebook code cell. And you can see that in this case, these, these cells printing output have worked. But in this cell, where I'm trying to demonstrate an error, so there's an error case in this function demonstrating it. And nbval has gone, this code didn't run right. There's, there's an error in this. So if for the moment, I'll comment that out, rerun that cell and save it, and then go back and run this again. We'll come back in a bit to how we can how we can deal with that case where you want to demonstrate an error as part of the notebook. Um, but you can see that now all of the tests on this one are passing. So I mentioned before, though, that it, it uses the output um, and so we've kind of got three different cases here with different kinds of output. So two plus two will, fingers crossed, always be the same. If it isn't, then we've probably got bigger problems than our code not working. Um, the date dot today is going to be predictable, but not, not always the same. Um, so I ran that a couple of days ago while I was preparing this talk, and that's got the, the 27th of August as the date. And the last one is doing something that's, that's randomized, so it's going to be different every time I run this code. So the, the kind of crudest way of using the output checking is to use the, the sort of original flag that was defined for this, which is pi.test dash dash nbval. And if I do that, then you'll see it runs those cells again, but now both the one with the date and the one with the random output have failed. And you can see that nbval gives you, gives you back a nice, 
a nice view of what's failed here. So you can see the code that ran, and then underneath it, the what the output should have been, or what we were expecting it to be from the file, and what the output is when we ran it just now. So kind of when if you're evaluating any kind of testing framework, then like everybody loves it when your tests are passing and the, the thing goes green, but that's not really when you need the power of a testing framework. The, the valuable things about a testing framework is how well it copes when stuff goes wrong and, and how much useful information it gives you to work out what the problem is. So hopefully we've done a fairly good job of that with this. So pretty much all of the rest of the complexity of MVVAL then comes from trying to deal with these variable outputs, like which bits do we want to compare and which bits do we want to say it's okay for this to vary. Um, and there's kind of, there's two different, two different ways that you can approach this. So the flag that I showed first with nbval lax um, starts from we don't check any of the output, we just run the code and check for exceptions, and then you can build up, like you can ask it to check specific cells output for that. And the other way is you can work down from checking all of the output and tell it to ignore specific cells output. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do it with, with comments in the code. So starting with the nbval lax, so starting without checking output, you can put a comment in the code saying nbval underscore check underscore output and that will tell it this cell, the output should be consistent. You should be able to trust that. So check this and fail the test if that has changed. Going the other way, nbval ignore output tells it this output's not reliable. Don't fail the tests if this changes. And then I said we'd come back to this thing about raising an exception. If you if you're expecting a bit of code to raise an exception and you want that to be shown in the notebook, then you can use this nbval raises exception and that will say this exception is okay. And in this case, it will, it will check the error that you're getting. So if I do, if I raise a different error here before it gets to that one, then, okay, that wasn't what I expected. <laughs> Did I save this? Maybe I forgot to save it. No, okay, possibly it doesn't check that at the moment. <laughs> Vidar, start debugging. Um, I thought it checked that it was giving you the same error that you'd got before, but that doesn't seem to be working at the moment. That might be a bug, that might be me misremembering the features of the library. You can do all of the same things with cell tags, which are a new feature that was added in notebook version 5.0. Um, so if you go into the, the view menu, then you can select the, the cell tagging toolbar and then you can give cells these little tags on the top um, to control particular bits of behavior. Um, so that means that it doesn't have to, you don't have to be changing the code in order to, to control nbval. Um, and this also means that this can be language agnostic. So these tags work the same way regardless of what your language's comments look like. Um, so the same, the same possibilities as with comments work with tags. So the names now are lowercase and with dashes instead of underscores. But again, you have nbval check output to tell it this, this should be reliable. Like I want you to check this. nbval ignore output to tell it I don't, I don't mind if this thing changes. And nbval raises exception to tell it this cell is going to raise an exception. Don't, don't complain about that. And then there's another way that you can more sort of more selectively allow for bits of variation in the output. 
uh, using regexes. Um, so there's a, a famous programmer joke about regexes, which is, I have a problem and I thought I'd use regexes. Now I have two problems. Um, so they're, they're kind of famously tricky to get right, especially for more complicated things. Um, and they're one of those things that's really, it looks like you can do an awful lot of things with it. And so people go like, oh yeah, I'll pass this HTML page using regexes. And, and then like, it's, yeah, they're quite, they're more limited than they appear. Um, but there are, there are use cases for them. Um, so like here I've, I've got a, a regex pattern for the date format that you saw up at the top of the file. Um, and you can see that the, um, so we're going to write this little config file. So we say, this is the regex pattern. We want to, every time we see this in the output, we want to replace it with the words date stamp. Um, and so you write that to a little file, and then you pass it on the command line with this dash dash sanitize with flag. So if I, actually, if I just go back up to the start of this notebook, and I will convert that to a markdown cell, which won't be executed. and run that to create the file. Now, if I do dash dash nvval again, then you should see one failure with that date comparison as we saw before. And if I now do sanitize with, what should I call the file, nvval sanitize, concerned by the fact that it's not tab completing here. Let's see if that's going to work. Yes, it is. Okay. So now, although that bit of output differs because they both match that same regex pattern, it's replaced them both with the words date stamp. And so it no longer sees the difference. So that's just another way to control what, what bits of output it's actually checking. And then finally, Vidar integrated it with his other project, NVDime. So if you have a, uh, you, if you install NVDime as well, that's notebook diffs and merges, then you can use the two together. So instead of reporting the output in the terminal, it can report the output in HTML format using nbdime, so now we've got that one failure again, and here it's going to say, this is the cell, this is what changed. Uh, in this case, that was fairly easy to see, even in the terminal, but if you had like a plot or something that was, that was changing, then nbdime could show you that much more easily than you can see that in a terminal. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interesting talk. Do you have any questions? Thank you for the talk. Um, would it make sense to, instead of having nbvel check whether cells have an error, that you like execute the cell, show the error, save it, and then have nbvel check that exactly the same error is indeed raised? You mean with the, the demonstrating an error? Yeah. Um, yeah, possibly. Yeah, that's something that we should we should think about. I can't off the top of my head think of a good reason why we haven't made it work like that. But I suspect that there might be one. Or there might be a bad reason, I don't know. Yeah, thanks. This this is this was very interesting. Um so I have a two-part question. First is, um, um, can you use the PyTest uh, utilities for, uh, for example, uh, the context manager for uh, uh, handling exceptions? And the other thing is, um, can you use the fixtures, like the, the PyTest utilities, utility for parameterization and directly use it from the notebook? Thanks. Uh, so I didn't 
I didn't understand the second part of the question properly. The first part, um, I don't think you can, like, because the aim isn't that you're writing tests in your notebook so much. The aim is to run the notebook and see if see if it's still doing what you expect it to. Um, so we're not kind of we're not really designing it around people importing PyTest and writing test code inside the notebook. Um, <clears throat> a great presentation, Thomas. I was curious, it, it's still like a very new tool, but do you have opinions now on how, like the best practices as to how this should be used? Like as much as possible stuff should be still tested in like source files and this is just, you know, for long running notebooks. Like do you have any opinions on this? Yeah, so kind of one of the, the cases that we've particularly designed this for is where you have notebooks as examples for a, a Python library, as we have for many of our Python libraries in the Jupyter project. Um, and so, yeah, this isn't a, a substitute for having real tests for your, your code, um, though obviously if you're, if you're lazy about writing tests, then it is possible to use it that way, like it gives you it gives you some assurance that your code is not sort of so completely broken that it can't even import. Um, but yeah, I sort of, yeah, I would definitely say like it is good to test your your library properly and then think of this as like checking that your examples haven't been broken by changes in your code. So uh, yeah, thanks for that uh, great tool. Um, I've tried to use it actually already, um, and uh, I get warnings when I uh, yeah or errors when I use it with different Python versions. So I test my libraries, my um, notebook examples against Python two and Python three, and it warns me like uh, yeah, no such kernel named Python two. Um, is that yeah? Yeah, it's a. Come and have a chat with us afterwards, but I think the answer is probably going to be there's a flag that you can add that's dash dash current dash env, I think, which tells it like use IPython in this environment because because when you save the notebook, it will save the notebook with like saying either Python 2 or Python 3 in metadata, and then it will try to use that same version when it runs it again. That's kind of part of the way Jupyter works and for the way we want NBVAL to work that's a bit problematic. So we have a, a flag that tells it sort of use the same Python that the, that the test system is already running on. Oh, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll hope to find it in the, in the documentation. Uh, do you plan a, a sprint on Friday? Um, we haven't planned one, I don't think, but if there are, if there are people interested, then, then I'm certainly around on Friday. All right, cool. Thank you. Great hey, talk, lovely, lovely tools. Uh, a quick one about NB Dime. Mm -hmm. If I'm correct, I've read that that can be used as a plugin locally. Is there any scope, any plans, any way to use NB Dime on PRs on GitHub? Um. Vidar may be able to, to answer this more. I, I don't think we've specifically talked to them about it, but we have, like, we have worked with GitHub before to integrate viewing notebooks directly in GitHub, so it's not beyond the realms of possibility that that, that could happen. Um. Sort of two questions as one. Um, does it actually run the, in a notebook environment, and how does it handle plugins and things like uh, plots in your output? Um, so, I think the way it handles plots currently is if you're using NB Dime, then it compares them and shows you if they differ. Um, I don't know if that's sort of super sensitive, any byte changes, we're going to assume the whole plot has changed. 
Um, again, that, that's something that Vidar can probably answer better. Um, if you're not using the NVDIME reporting, then I think it just ignores differences in images um, and only considers the text output. Are there any more questions? Okay then, thank you very much.